You put your hands on me. Turn around. I'm taking your head off. You okay. understand that, son? Turn around. Place your hands behind your back. I'm not doing it. Welcome back to U.S. Corrupt Cops, the channel where we uncover the truth behind law enforcement misconduct. In today's episode, we bring you a shocking story of corrupt officers who harassed an elderly man on his own property and faced instant karma and legal consequences. If you like this video, press 1. On March 9, 2024, Sergeant Joe Beers from the Oilton Police Department in Oilton, Oklahoma, was notified about three individuals selling solar panels within the city boundaries, which breached Section 44-15 of the Oilton Code of Ordinances. After locating one of the solicitors inside the city, Sergeant Beers was informed that the other two were driving nearby and was given a description of their vehicle. Shortly thereafter, Sergeant Beers discovered the vehicle parked in the driveway of Willard Walbridge, a 76-year-old disabled Vietnam veteran living just outside Oilton city limits. Sergeant Beers exited his patrol car and approached the solicitors seated in Mr. Walbridge's driveway. Mr. Walbridge requested that Sergeant Beers leave his property, and this exchange was recorded on Sergeant Beers' body camera. You're gonna be the one that's gonna be the one that loses, okay? Uh -huh. I so you be, need to step back, okay? I won't be the one. Hey, I ain't stepping back you, nothing. You need to step back. Son, I'll take your head off. Okay, you need to step back. I ain't stepping back. You're on my Nine place. County. Get the hell out of here now. All right, you need to step back. You understand that? You need to step back. Get the hell out of here now. You're on my place. Okay. You interrupt Do we want to go this way? Do you want to go this way? I was making contact with uh, somebody well, who was soliciting, and I have a uh, another suspect here that's starting to get irate. I'm probably going to have to go hands on. All right. Keep your hands out of your pockets. No. I, 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 You're on my place. I, I ain't getting my hands out of nothing. Let me, let me explain something to you, okay? I'm dealing with something totally different, okay? okay? Whether it's in the county or not in the county, it started in the city, okay? That's where we are. I'm going to be straight to did the point. Did you ask my, my permission? I do not have to have your permission. Place? You damn sure I do. do. I mean, this is my I'm place. I'm going to tell you one more time to step back. Okay? This is my place. Step back. I'm not stepping back. You get the hell in your truck and get out here now. Mr. Walbridge persistently asked Sergeant Beers to vacate his property, but Sergeant Beers declined, asserting that he did not require Mr. Walbridge's permission to be there. The Fourth Amendment safeguards individuals from unreasonable searches and seizures in their homes. Although these protections extend to the curtilage, the area closely surrounding the home, courts have consistently ruled that certain parts of a person's property outside the home and its immediate surroundings are not covered by the Fourth Amendment. In this case, Sergeant Beers approached the solicitors in Mr. Walbridge's driveway, which a court would likely determine was not part of the home's curtilage. As the Oklahoma Court of Criminal Appeals stated in the 1982 Finch v. State case, a reasonable expectation of privacy, not common law property distinctions, controls the scope of the Fourth Amendment. Regarding driveways, the court further explained, a driveway is only a semi-private area. The expectation of privacy which a possessor of land may reasonably have while carrying on activities on his driveway will generally depend upon the nature of the activities and the degree of visibility from the street. It would be equally unwise to hold as a matter of law that all driveways are protected by the Fourth Amendment from all penetrations by police officers, as to hold that no driveway is ever protected from police incursions. The test in each case would be that of reasonableness, both the possessor's expectations of privacy and the officer's reasons for being on the driveway. In other words, even though Sergeant Beers entered Mr. Walbridge's property by approaching the driveway, the driveway's open and accessible nature likely means a court would find that his initial entry did not violate the Fourth Amendment. However, Mr. Walbridge might argue that once he asked Sergeant Beers to leave, any implied permission to be on the driveway ended, and Sergeant Beers' refusal to comply breached his reasonable privacy expectations, thereby violating the Fourth Amendment. This argument, however, would need to be settled in court. Do you guys know him? Do you guys want to come try to talk to him before he goes in? Well, I'm dealing with another issue, so 
You fix it. All right. Oh, good news to you. All right. Turn around, place your hands on your back. Turn around and place you your hands. You put your hands in my. Turn around. I'm taking your head off. Now, you understand that, son? I don't see what you can see. Drum right unit. Turn around, place your hands behind your back. No. Turn around and place no. your hands behind Get your back. Get the hell off my place. Turn around. Stay in that car. Get the hell off my place. Okay. Turn around and place your hands behind your back. You that is a lawful enough. order. You put your hands on me. Turn around. I'm taking your head off. You right. understand that, son? Turn around. Place your hands behind your back. I'm not doing it. 907 County got one fighting. Turn around. Place your hands behind your back. Well, your husband does not want to listen. All right. Listen. I'm going to turn you around. We're going to cuff you up. You got a lot of cuffs in me. Just make sure this other guy that's back here doesn't come up behind me. Uh, uh, did you get my nitro? You need your nitro? Hey, he needs nitro. Uh, They're coming. When Mr. Walbridge refused to move aside, Sergeant Beers instructed him to place his hands behind his back. Upon Mr. Walbridge's non-compliance, Sergeant Beers restrained him to the ground, which led to an apparent cardiac event. Under Section 540 of 21 of the Oklahoma Statute, any person who willfully delays or obstructs any public officer in the discharge or attempt to discharge any duty of his or her office is guilty of a misdemeanor. If Sergeant Beers had been acting within his jurisdiction, a court might find that Mr. Walbridge obstructed Sergeant Beers by preventing him from engaging with the solicitors. However, Mr. Walbridge could argue he was merely exercising his rights as a property owner. As previously discussed, because Mr. Walbridge's residence was outside city limits, Sergeant Beers was outside his official jurisdiction during the investigation. Therefore, if charged with obstruction, Mr. Walbridge could argue that Sergeant Beers was not performing any official duties and lacked the lawful authority to investigate his property. Additionally, Mr. Walbridge could assert that Sergeant Beers' use of force was excessive, violating the Fourth Amendment. In assessing whether force was excessive, courts consider three factors outlined by the Supreme Court in the 1989 Graham v. Connor case. The severity of the crime at issue, whether the suspect poses an immediate threat to the safety of the officers or others, and whether he is actively resisting arrest or attempting to evade arrest by flight. The alleged crime was merely obstructing a solicitation investigation. Although Mr. Walbridge made verbal threats and refused commands, he did not physically resist or try to flee. Thus, a court might find that not only was the arrest itself unlawful, but the force used by Sergeant Beers was also constitutionally excessive. You need your nitro? 907 to 94. 91. Go ahead and start me medical. Hey, stay with me, okay? I'm going to roll you back this way. I'm going to roll you back this way. Hey, go get that. Get, tell him to grab his nitro. Oh. Bring it, bring it, bring it. I know. Yeah, how it goes? I don't. Start me medical. Here. It's totally not cold. How many? One or two? Do you know? You just want to just drop under. It goes under. Under. Close. There's one, Willard. No one. Better get ammo too. All right, it's on. It's right. I'm telling you, hurry. You're gonna end up deaf when you're. This was stupid. It, it is stupid. It, yet. it is stupid. You didn't have to do this. Okay, listen. I don't care what he was doing. Listen. He's 80 years Back old. Back up. Okay. You're going to do me now? Back up. 
I hope he's still working out. Back up. Go ahead. Where's, is that, is that the wife? How many does he normally take? One or two? One, I guess. I don't know. Whatever he needs. He does it. Does it go under his tongue? Yes. My subject might be having a heart attack. You need to tell the ambulance to step it up. I'm going to put this, it, it's your pill. It's your nitro. Your nitro, okay? Put it in your mouth. Your nitro. Hey, talk. He saw, he, yeah. Well, he he's looking for you guys. Yes, sir. I just can't have you over here threatening me and telling me. Okay, you give me the pill. Give me the pill. He's got to go in his. I know. Willard, I'm Willard, good. in your mouth, okay? Yeah. We put one. You do. You, you got, got it? Put one. You do. That's your two. That's your number two. Sorry. Okay, help me. Sorry. Willard? Who the fuck off and let him come down? Maybe it'll help. I ain't been disrespectful. No, you're back off and let him be. Will you, will you sit down here? He's got problems. He doesn't need any more. I'm not trying to give him any more. I wasn't trying to get it to this point. Back off and talk a little clearer for me. Please. I'm gonna need you guys to stay here for a minute. We'll probably need a statement from you. Go. What, what, what is the deal that you're here? Yeah. So, somebody called in saying that there were solicitors going around. Uh huh. So? They gave this vehicle. Okay. So, I made contact with these guys. Okay. It happened in the city. And your husband, is this your husband? Yes. Came up, basically told me to get the fuck off his property. This is county property. Started threatening me. Property, talking to somebody. Is that okay, isn't it? Well, there's an incident that happened prior to that. So take it in this concept. If these guys murdered somebody in the city, and then they came over here and were talking to you, would we not come here and apprehend them? Sergeant Beers argues that he was authorized to continue his investigation on county property because the solicitors initially violated city property laws. However. As the Oklahoma Court of Criminal Appeals clarified in the 2004 United States v. Sawyer case, generally, a police officer's authority cannot extend beyond his jurisdiction. Recognized exceptions to this general rule are hot pursuit, when one municipality has requested assistance and when an officer is serving an arrest warrant. Otherwise, once outside the city limits of the municipality by which they are employed, the officer acts as a private citizen with no greater authority than that of a private citizen. In this scenario, it is clear that Sergeant Beers was not responding to another municipality's request for assistance or executing an arrest warrant. Additionally, a court would likely agree that he was not in hot pursuit of the solicitors. According to the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Oklahoma in the 2016 Madden v. Cleveland County case, Hot pursuit occurs when an officer is in immediate or continuous pursuit of a suspect from the scene of a crime. Since Sergeant Beers was searching for the solicitors without chasing them from a crime scene, the hot pursuit exception would probably not apply. Furthermore, the hot pursuit exception permits officers to make arrests outside their jurisdiction, not to conduct investigations. For example, in the 1977 Graham v. State case, the Oklahoma Court of Criminal Appeals invalidated a warrantless search conducted by an officer outside his jurisdiction, finding no applicable exceptions. Because Sergeant Beers was investigating rather than attempting to arrest the solicitors, a court would likely determine that the hot pursuit exception did not apply, rendering his actions outside his authority. No, it's okay. Yeah. Gonna be on West. <laughs> I don't see how far out of my ambulance. Is he still conscious? Nine oh seven only left provided. They were still going northbound on ninety nine. <laughs> What's your address? Five 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 three four four. We can turn that. Sorry, that. 5344 Westwood. What is your name? Beers. Sergeant Beers. Beers? Yes, ma'am. B-E-E-R-S. Okay. 
badge is 907. But there were some solicitors. Um, somebody called the office. I was in the PD. And uh, came out and said it was a ruinous little car with Michigan plates. So, sitting in the PD. Um, doing paperwork. Call comes through. I missed the call. I call right back. They say, you know, hey, this is so and so. I can't even remember the name. I have to look on that call ID. Um, there's some solicitors down on the Um, Isn't there an ordinance for it? So I didn't really know for sure. I looked it up, found that there was an ordinance, made contact with a female. So the female's there. I got her information. She told me what the other two males were driving. So I came back this way, found this car. It's here. I saw the two gentlemen there, so I wanted to make contact with them. Make contact with them. We we're fixing to leave. We're I was gonna have them go back with me over to where she was, so I could explain, you know, the city ordinance to all three of them at one time. And um, the I, I don't even know his name. He came. He kept getting up in my face, getting up in my face. I told me, "You ain't got right to be here." This is county property, and I said, I understand it's county property. I explained to him that, you know, we have an issue that happened inside the city that I was dealing with, and that I have to deal with that, and then I, I'll talk to him. Give me one second, ma'am. Who's the chief? Chief Sal, I'm on the phone with him right now. I'll, have, I'll, I'll, I'll make contact with you. He kept coming out, kept coming out, kept getting up in my face, putting his hands up. I don't know. He just got upset that I was here talking to them, and... He said, you have no right to come and talk to them because they're in the county now. And I said, well, I had an issue that took place in the city and, you know, I have to handle that and then we'll go from there. And so we went from that to um, start putting his hands on his back. And at that point, I said, you know, look, you need to back up away from me. This is going to go a different way. And okay, he said, you. Uh, I don't know exact word, but something about, you know, like if you put your hands on me or... You know, uh, I'll do something to you. I mean, there was some type of threat, physical threat. So I kind of sidestepped and I went to grab his arm. He yeah, yanked back away from me. Well. So I sidestepped the other way, no. grab his arm and put him on the ground. I didn't know who it was. I mean, I treated him just like I would have done any other person. He hollered and said he needed a uh, nitro. And so I hollered at his wife, said, hey, he needs his nitro. They brought it out, gave him two nitros, I called for an ambulance, called for, I called for drum right before I ever had to go physical. Still need me for anything? Well, I told him it's in 22. You, hey, hold on, hold on one second. I, I was trying to get somebody here before it got to this point, so okay. uh, yeah, they sent me all the way to like fourth on the east side of town, and I'm <laughs> like, I don't know where he is. Well, I, told, I told him, uh, between Maine and third off of Westwood, yeah, they, they said between Maine and third, Westwood never came out. So. <laughs> okay, all right, man, if you yep. don't need me, I'll head back. Yep, you're good, I appreciate right. it. Um, let me talk to the ambulance. I'll play back. All right. uh, basically, we had to get physical. Uh, we went to the ground. Uh, he said he needed his nitro. And so I hollered for his wife to get his nitro. They gave him uh, two pills. Tried to get him. He was on his side. So they were tucking him. And then we've been here at this whole point. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm good, but I just think you have to take care of me. Mr. Walbridge did not experience any severe complications from the cardiac event, though he mentioned that his wrist and finger were bleeding and that he was bruised up upon regaining consciousness in the ambulance. In a media interview, Mr. Walbridge stated he had filed complaints regarding the incident, but had not yet decided to pursue legal action. He faced no criminal charges. On March 23, 2024, the Oilton Police Department posted partial body camera footage of the altercation on its Facebook page, accompanied by a statement defending Sergeant Beer's actions. The statement claimed that Sergeant Beer's was forced to physically take Mr. Walbridge into custody for his own safety and the possible safety of the public, and asserted, It is unfortunate that these events had to take place, but it is the opinion of this department that Sergeant Beer's acted accordingly based on training and officer safety as a full-time State of Oklahoma CLEET certified police officer. Despite his department's apparent support, Sergeant Beer's resigned on April 9th 2024. The incident was reported to Creek County District Attorney Max Cook,
who confirmed he was reviewing the body camera footage and conducting an investigation. As of this writing, no charges have been filed against Sergeant Beers, and there have been no public updates on the DA's investigation. Chief Stout had defended Sergeant Beers' actions during the encounter with Mr. Walbridge and had a history of domestic violence and sexual misconduct allegations. On April 30, 2024, Chief Stout's wife filed a protective order against him, and on May 14, the Oilton City Council voted to remove Chief Stout for cause. Guerrilla Publishing has released a documentary detailing their findings, and a link is provided in the episode description for those interested in learning more. Overall, Sergeant Beers earns an F for showing a complete disregard for his jurisdiction's boundaries and Mr. Walbridge's rights as a property owner. He used excessive and unwarranted force against Mr. Walbridge and showed no remorse for his actions, which led an elderly veteran to suffer a cardiac event. Even if Sergeant Beers had been justified in arresting Mr. Walbridge, which I believe he was not, the force he employed against a passively resisting elderly man on his own property was unnecessary and unacceptable, especially since the alleged offense was merely a potential solicitation violation. Sergeant Beers had several options to de-escalate the situation, such as honoring Mr. Walbridge's request to leave the property and asking the solicitors to accompany him. He could have also used the solicitor's license plate information to continue the investigation later, or requested assistance from county police. Instead of utilizing these alternatives, Sergeant Beers chose to stay on private property outside his jurisdiction after being asked to leave, without a warrant or exigent circumstances, and used significant physical force against an elderly homeowner defending his property from an unreasonable police intrusion. This behavior was entirely unjustifiable and I am relieved that both Sergeant Beers and Chief Stout are no longer with the Oilton PD. Mr. Walbridge receives a B- because, although he threatened physical violence against Sergeant Beers and resisted attempts to arrest him, he was likely within his rights to resist under Oklahoma law. While citizens can be arrested for resisting unlawful arrests in many states, Oklahoma jurisprudence recognizes a right to reasonably resist an unlawful arrest. However, there are limits to this right, and individuals can still face legal consequences if they resist an arrest they believe is illegal, but a court later deems lawful, or if the resistance exceeds what a court considers reasonable. Given that Sergeant Beers was attempting to arrest Mr. Walbridge outside his jurisdiction, a court would likely find that Mr. Walbridge was justified in reasonably resisting the arrest. Nonetheless, I do not endorse making threats of physical violence in most circumstances and advise individuals against resisting arrests, even in states that permit resistance to unlawful arrests, due to the significant risk of criminal charges if a court disagrees with the legality of the arrest or the reasonableness of the force used during resistance. Thanks for tuning in to U.S. Corrupt Cops. If this story resonated with you, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more eye-opening content. Together, we can shine a light on injustice and advocate for accountability. See you in the next episode.